So I'm asked all the time by traders, Rob, what company should I trade? What companies do you trade? Finding good, consistent candidates to trade will be critical to your success. My name is Robert Roy, founder of WealthBuildersHQ.com, and in this video, we're gonna go over the process for you to find candidates for you to trade. So the first thing I wanna say about it is you can't trade everything. You're not gonna find the average person trading in Amazon at almost $2,000 a share and trading Sprint at $10 a share. The average person won't do that and should not do that. You're gonna have a range of stocks that you're comfortable with that you can afford to trade. So let's talk about creating a watch list. Now there will be three things that are critical to every watch list that you create. The very first one will be stock price. Now part of that will be predicated on what you can afford to trade and what you're comfortable to trade. So you may say, Rob, you know, I've done this for a little bit now. I've traded a few stocks and when they get up above 50 or $70, yeah, I get a little worried about that. Then you know that you need a range lower than that. So where would your bottom be? Let's say your top was 70, where would the bottom be? Well, I don't really wanna go lower than $30. Great, you can now set up a filter to find that range of that 30 or 40 to $70 of stocks that you're looking for. Trade Navigator has a great scanning feature to do just that. There are other software programs that do as well. This is the one that we use, the Pro Scanner it's called. Right, so number one is finding stock price. You need to figure out what your stock price is going to be. Number two is volume. Volume tells us how many shares a day are traded on this stock. Ideally, in a great and perfect world, I would not wanna see anything under one million shares. And that's my personal, is bottom of volume is a million. I don't care how high it goes. Give me a hundred million, that's okay, but not less than a million. I am okay for newer traders if they find stocks they like to go down to maybe 750,000, but for me, it's a million. So that's number two. Number three is the options price. You see, I may look at a stock and it, the stock is trading at, let's say $35, but I see the option is trading at $14, $15. That price may be way too expensive for me. So that stock may work but it may not be the right one for you. Lululemon is a great example right now. I like them as a company, not saying anything bad about them. Their options are a little expensive for the average person that wants to trade because they get up into that 15, 18, $20 range and that might be more than the average individual, especially if you're newer, is willing to put in the trade. So pick options that the pricing is not hurting your pocketbook, right? Now, staying on the pricing, there are two pieces in price the bid and the ask price, right? And they're both what the market maker sets up and says, this is what we're willing to offer you if you wanna sell us your stock, and this is what we'll pay to buy it. The second one, the ask, is this is how much money we're asking you to pay to buy it from us. If you look at an option, and let's say the option has a price of $2 by $2.10. So that's the bid is two, the ask is 210. If I said to you, which one would you want to buy the option for? Well, Rob, I'd want to buy it for $2. If I had my choice, of course you would. Which one would you rather sell it for? Oh, I'd rather sell it for two ten, dollars the one that's more money. Right. Now, it, bid and ask can be a little confusing, and I had to come up with these cutesy ways for me to remember all of these things when I was a new trader. So here's what I did, and hopefully this will help you. I want you to look at whatever the price is and ask yourself, those two prices, two by 210, which one do I want? And that'll differ whether you're buying or selling. So ask yourself the question, which one do I want? And here's what, whatever you come up with, the answer is this. Whatever one you want, you can have it. All right? You get the one you don't want. The difference of that bid ask is what the market maker keeps for their fee, their VIG for putting the buyer and the seller together in that trade you get what one you don't want. That's the easy way to remember. So those three pieces are gonna be critical to choosing your options and your stocks in your components for what you're looking to trade in your positions. So that's the process, folks. You need a systematic approach no matter what you do. I gave you three steps. Follow those three steps towards your own success because successful traders are educated traders. Instead of just plucking from air a stock and saying, ooh, I'm going to trade this one because my buddy said it was a good stock to trade, you need to make sure you make an educated decision. And speaking on education, folks, we have a free training that we have done. We've got a recording for it. It's still up right now. I can't say how long it will be there. 
go ahead down in the description below and click on that link to watch that training, what it takes to become a successful trader. So there you have it folks, three simple steps to be able to help you find candidates to put on your own watches. So until next time, make it a profitable day. Keep focused on the quest to becoming a great trader. Keep crushing it and we'll see you on the next video. Folks, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and click the subscribe button so you can follow along with all of our great content and ring the bell so you never miss anything new that comes out. And folks, with that down below, we've got a couple of other videos for you to choose from that you can watch from our materials.